Hello everyone, this is Bentley and today I'm going to teach you guys how to hack the Fluval 3.0 light. The biggest complaint that I have about the Fluval is that we cannot put in uh, siesta periods. For those of you who maybe you're pretty experienced with CO2, you've probably read somewhere on like the Planet Tank or something like that about doing a siesta. And the whole goal here is that You'll have a brief period of light, usually five hours tends to be the preferable. Then you'll have a period where all your light goes off, and the goal is to let the CO2 build back up to a higher threshold so that you have two really strong photosynthetic periods for your plants. It's best growth, better color in theory, can get a little more dense growth over time instead of one long period, because in that long period, uh, CO2 slowly gets consumed, and then as the maximum photosynthesis starts to occur, it consumes a lot of the CO2 in the water if you're not pushing a ton of CO2 into your water, which as you guys know, I run uh, low and slow. I don't run a lot of CO2. I want just kind of a light amount of CO2 the whole time. Um, I'm not trying to really push like the ADA style tanks where there's tons and tons and tons of gas you're going in that tank. Um, but I will preface this, there, the, the whole purpose of this is to give yourself two periods of high CO2. So this is to get your, your plant growth as high as possible. Two things I want to caution out there. If you look at say like the, um, the, the growth industry, uh, like basement tomato plants, or even some of like vertical farms. So for the, if you haven't looked into vertical farming, it's uh, like things like microgreens, but all sorts of uh, vegetable plants grown indoors in like warehouse scenarios is called vertical farming. Um, a lot of these grow houses for a while used to use siestas and they don't anymore. I'm not saying that scientifically it's proven that a siesta is good or bad. I'm just saying that the commercial growers no longer use these things. However, usually those are not plants fully submerged under water. There are a lot of CO2 guys who swear by a siesta and without one, they don't care what your light does. So let's show you how to let the Fluval Lights program do that for you. So I'm gonna bring up a screenshot and it's really important that you look at this and you're gonna, it's gonna look strange but then I'm gonna explain why it works. So the first one is to do uh, sunrise, uh, about four hours of daytime, then sunset. Uh, it's total six hours of light, so it's a little longer than the five to five, which is common in doing these. But um, you're gonna notice that it starts at zero o'clock or midnight. Then I have a sunrise and I go to you know, full 100% whites, my normal super low blue, and a good amount of pink. And then sunset is from 5 to 6 a.m. And then the entire rest of the time is night. So here's the neat trick. Um, when the fluval light loses power, but it's been on a program, after about 15 seconds, the memory of what time of day it is on that light gets purged. So this is the software tester in me talking to explain exactly what's going on. Uh, first off, uh, to to James, uh, I don't know whether it's pronounced Leicester or Lester, but to James, who is the original kind of formulator of the idea and some of the initial testing and one of his uh, tests is something I'm going to show you next, which is a true dimmed siesta as opposed to a full siesta. Um, thanks a lot. Like, because of you, we have this hack. Uh, the only difference that I've done is I've gone and done a little bit harder core experimentation. Uh, and more importantly, I've kind of proved from a, a just understanding software and code perspective exactly why this works. I won't get into those technical details, but so here's the here's the trick. Once it loses that power, when it resumes having power again, the light assumes that it is now midnight or zero hour. And, and because we use a 24 hour clock in the Fluval light, let's just always refer to that as zero hour. 
It'll take a few seconds to remember its program, but it will keep the program in its memory. It doesn't purge that out after a power loss. So what we can do is use a, a light timer like this and turn the power off when we don't want the light on and then turn the power back on during our period where we want to start the first photo period. Let that go, run its night, turn off again for at least 15 seconds. So just usually most light timers, one little press in is half an hour. You just have to push one in, that's it. You could push the whole time you want it off just to be safe, but all you have to do is that half hour right before you want the light to start again. Once it resumes power, it's gonna come on, it loses its sync of what time it is on the light itself, and it will assume it is now zero and restart your program. So in my case, it's gonna, let's say I start my lighting at seven in the morning, um, and that's when my timers turn it on. Well, it's gonna turn on, it's gonna go through its sunrise, it's gonna do my daylight, then it's gonna sunset, and then it's gonna go into night and be all off. And then I'm gonna cut power to it. Sorry about that, you guys know I'm still a little under the weather. I uh, had a bit of a coughing fit, so we had a little cut there. <laughs> um, anyway, so what we're, what we're trying to do is then we turn the power back on and we're tricking the light now into thinking, oh, it's zero hour again, start my program. So um, let's say that I wanna go, you know, I start at 7 a.m. I'm gonna have my full six hours of light like you see here in the screenshot. And then at the end of that six hours, I want two hours off. So I'm gonna wait for that two hours. I'm gonna leave the light in my night cycle just because it's simpler this way. And then right before I want the light to come back on, I'm gonna push in one of the off switches on my light timer. That little half hour is gonna happen. Then my lights come are gonna get power back again. And they're gonna realize that it's, it's power time. They're gonna figure out what time it is. Oh, I forgot what time it is, so now it's zero, and they're gonna restart the light cycle. You'll get sunrise, daytime, sunset again. Two photo periods, an off, and then at the end of that, you can um, just power your light back off using the timer, or you can leave it in night mode. It's up to you how you wanna do it. All you need to do is cut power to the light half with one little push in, which is usually half an hour, sometimes or 15 minutes, depending on the timer, before the start, because it has to lose power for at least 15 seconds. What I will warn you here is that it's actually best if you cut power entirely to the light from a purpose of saving money on your power bill. It's not gonna save you a lot of money, but it will save you a little bit, as opposed to say running your light for you know 12 or 13 hours in a day. Now, if you want to do a true like five to five siesta, um, what I was just doing is a half hour sunrise, four hours of light. So four hours of pure high light. And I would be, you, this is, keep in mind, this is really only for um, two purposes. One, tanks with CO2, because you want, you're trying to build that CO2 back up. If you're not, if you're running a low tech setup, you're not running CO2, don't worry about a siesta. The only thing you might want to do is maybe if you own rainbow fish, rainbow fish in the morning tend to show their best color. So you could be using this light to give yourself a morning in the actual morning, and then a morning when you get home from work so that your fish are at full color when you get to enjoy them again. Um, Gary Lang's talked about this. I've tested it, and you know what? It works for some of my rainbow fish downstairs. When I was testing uh, quite a bit with this light over the last, I would say, week and a half, two weeks. Um, oh no it's, no, it's like two and a half weeks now, actually. Um, I, I would, on my days off, I would wait for the light to come back on. And even though there's a little bit of ambient light from my windows and stuff, my Bozeman eye boy would be at like full color again. It was pretty great because I got to see him at full color twice a day instead of just once. Because he's a, the, the Atinja Bozeman eye that's in, this, in my 90 gallon tank, um, he's a type that is really amazing color in the morning and then slowly lets it fade a little bit through the day. I mean, he's still got some color, but that's really common in a lot of rainbows. And it depends on some of their capture locations, whether or not they're really only morning color fish or not. Um, and you know, you, if you've watched Gary Lang stuff, you've seen this. So this is, if you keep rainbow fish, this is a way to see the color a little bit more. You might also be able to trick them into spawning multiple times a day because they'll think it's morning again. And rainbow fish aren't the smartest fish in the world. 
but they certainly are pretty. <laughs> but mostly this is for you people who uh, do really high tech setups. So you're high light, high CO2, you're trying to get really maximum growth, intense, intense coloration. These siestas tend to be really popular in that crowd. Um, I personally don't use a siesta, but again, I go low and slow on my CO2. I'm not trying to get very high concentrations of CO2 and really push the envelope when it comes to plant growth. So let's talk about the other way to do this. This is what's called a dim siesta. And this is, um, I'm, I, I really struggle to find why this is popular. I understand why the full siesta matters and I've seen some of the um, like CO2 concentration charts that people have done to, to prove why they do that. Um, but the, the dim siesta works like this. You'll be full light, then you'll like ramp down to say halfish light, leave it dim for a couple hours and then ramp back up to full light again. Uh, and sometimes you'll you'll leave it dimmed for a long period of time. Um, so James did testing on this, and so the one that I'm going to show you is James's profile now. You can see it on screen. As you can see, it sunrises at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Then you have your daylight, then sunset, and you'll notice like the daylight is lower than the night. The night is 100% everything. I would never go 100% blue on this light. But we did this for testing purposes only, which is absolute maximum light. So what this is trying to do is it runs this light cycle for a little bit and then uh, uses a timer to turn off during the night cycle so that there's only a short period of intense light. And then it dims down to a lesser light. So maybe if you are running um, low CO2, and you want to do say like two hours of really intense light then i want to go down to lesser light and let my co2 kind of build back up but still be getting photosynthesis to my plants and then i do another period of like two hours of really intense light and then turn everything off um th this this is where you'd use a timer for this so the whole goal here is that you're turning you're only turning the light off once um unlike with my system you're kind of turning it off twice a day you're just turning this off so that uh, you have true night, which is gonna be everything off. And then when it comes on, you're gonna come on at full intensity. You're going full blast. You want a short, powerful period of light for high photosynthetic. So that's usually, again, you want your CO2 to have built up in the morning. You're gonna turn on your light for a big burst of light. Try to get a big amount of growth. Ramp it down a little bit to let the plant still get some light. Maybe not be as weird with your fish. Um, and then let that CO2 kind of trickle back up a little bit or, or level, get another big high intensity photo period and then go off for the day. So, and this one, what you would do is let's say that you want, um, your light's gonna come on for, in this case, it's like a six hour period when it restarts. I would probably not do it quite this long. I think that's a little too long because um, otherwise this is a extremely long photo period of light in a day. Um, so what I would be doing is like uh, two hours of light, then I would do my sunrise, which is going to ramp me down to the dim portion. I would run my dim for say six hours and then ramp back up into another two hour high photo period uh, and then call it, call it a day from there. Um, personally, like I said, I couldn't find any paperwork on why people use this uh, light profile, I guess is what I would say. However, um, I, I do know that a lot of people were looking for a dim siesta and this is like the true dim siesta versus the one where you're turning your lights off for a period of time. So I, we wanted to show you both profiles. Again, massive thanks to James uh, for doing the kind of the initial theory on this and some of the initial testing. All you need is your 3.0 light. You need your application to set it up initially and then you need a timer to cut the power to the light. Keep in mind, the second that you resync your phone to this light, it's going to throw everything off until you cut power again. So you you really don't want to resync very often. Um, and honestly, I think there's only like two cases for this. You are running very high CO2 in a plant farming or a super high tech display tank. 
or two, maybe you want to save a little bit of money on your, your light bill and you still want that kind of, um, the, the sunrise day sunset period where it makes the fish think they've got a full day even though it's only in say like six hours and then lights go off for a while and then they get another one of those periods later in the day um, I don't know if I, I haven't seen anything that can prove one way or the other if this can impact your fish's health but I know there's lots of rainbow fish guys that have their lights off in the middle of the day so they can enjoy them in the morning go to work and then come home and enjoy them again because the lights trick the fish and make them think, oh, it's morning again, full color. Um, not everybody does that, but there are some guys that do it, and none of them have seemed to have reported any problems with their fish. So, there you go. That is how you hack the Fluval 3.0 light to give yourself a dim siesta. Uh, you know, the only other thing that I would say is bad about this light is just that um, we're not getting software updates to the app. We really should. I really wish Fluval would, but this is a way we can use a 10 to $12 piece of hardware that you can get at a hardware store. Um, or if you want to get the really robust ones, Aquarium Co-op sells a really, really nice light timer. Um, I'll, I'll link that down in the description below. Um, I have actually, I used that one for my testing and I used uh, a cheap one out of a hardware store too, just to make sure that like, I didn't need um, something nicer to make sure it worked, to make sure that like, if you maybe you're in Canada and you can't get the the nice one that Aquarium Co-op sells, and you can just get the the kind of meh one that you get at a hardware store normally, or like a you know a grocery store or something. Um, well, not grocery store, but like one of the um, <laughs> departmental type stores. Uh, Fred Meyer is what I'm thinking of here locally, but I don't know that Fred Meyer is up that way. But what have you? A light timer that's not necessarily quite as robust as that one, um, and it works on both. Shout out to Tails. <laughs> He's just swimming around. Anyway, um, so this is how you do it. Again, real simple. You turn the power off for at least 15 seconds, and that's going to, once the power comes back on, that triggers your light back into its program mode at zero hour, the very start, and it'll just repeat. So if you do my light profile, we'll, we'll bring that back up right now. The second you get your power back, within about five to 10 seconds, it kicks on. You'll start your sunrise, you'll go through your day, you'll have sunset, and then you could turn the power off for anywhere between two and four hours, depends on how long you want your siesta period. You put power back to the light, it'll assume that it's zero hour again, it'll restart your sunrise, your day, then your sunset. You just cut power again, and you just let that cycle, and you just set your timer up for however, where you want your light during the day, um, and like I said, you can just only click in the one button right before you want it to start in both spots and let the night cycle naturally in the light handle the rest for you. But if you want to cut power entirely, save a little extra money on your power bill, but still have sunrises and sunsets, this is how you do it. That's it, guys. That's how you hack the Fluval 3.0 light. Thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.